So recently I came across this. It's called Ubuntu. It's another one of these themed Linux distros that is trying to not just look like, but be Windows. Now don't think that I'm some kind of Windows fanboy. I actually am not a big fan of 10 and really I don't like 11, but that's one of the beauties of Linux. You can choose your interface and theme it however you want for free. However, Ubuntu seems to be trying to pull it off as a direct Windows replacement, including the paid license. So here, as it says, Ubuntu, also known as Windows Ubuntu, is an operating system that inherits all of the appearance and functionality of Microsoft Windows, including the new Copilot Assistant, but does not require TPM, Secure Boot, or any other hardware requirements for its operation. If we go down further, it claims to be compatible with Windows apps, and you can run your favorite EXE and MSI applications with Wine. You can also enjoy embedded apps like Edge, Teams, Skype, PowerShell, Hold Up. Skype has a Linux release, as far as I'm aware. And as far as Edge, most people who know better would just use a Linux install of Chrome or Brave, since Edge is just built on Chromium. Not to mention the fact that the majority of people already hate Edge because of Microsoft spying, so why? But okay, whatever. Teams, you can use with Wine or just use Teams for Linux, which is a third-party app you can get on GitHub, but okay, whatever. As we scroll down the page, you'll notice if you look closely at the screenshots of Ubuntu, they're actually screenshots of Windows itself. So, okay, so let's install it and uh, let's take a, you know, we'll take a quick look. I'll be installing this on a virtual machine as it's just Ubuntu, so no need to benchmark the performance. The ISO boots to a live desktop and the installer actually looks pretty nice, I have to admit. It's not too far off from the KDE stock installer, but what they seem to have changed looks nice. Once installed, you'll notice that they added a Windows-esque boot animation. And once we log in, as you can see at first, it looks a lot like Windows 11. There are a few things that don't look quite right, such as the font down by the clock and, and the layout, but it's very close. Now, this isn't the first time I booted this install. Um, I had to install VMware tools and get the resolution set. However, once I did, out of habit, I right-clicked on the taskbar to move the icons all the way to the left, and yet, no Windows contextual menus. This is 100% KDE. Something else I just noticed while editing is when I went to empty the trash, I clicked move to trash instead and well there goes the trash can so apparently it was just a shortcut or link as they would call it in Linux. So checking out the apps in the start menu it's very Windows like organized alphabetically and not organized by the application type and I like that. You'll notice there at the bottom a program named Ubuntu Power Off. Well when you click the power button it actually loads this program which is how they get the Windows shutdown dialog in KDE. It's just an app so you can load it multiple times if you really wanted to. When you enter system settings, it looks very Windows-esque, but choosing something, it just links you to the Linux panel. I saw the option for Active Directory and got excited until I realized that it just opens up a browser and takes you to the how-to section of the Ubuntu webpage. Now to test the claim that it can run Windows executables, I copied a few programs over. This is nothing new, however. Um, it just uses Wine to make this happen. Wine can be installed on really any Linux distro. Uh, however, it comes pre-installed and pre-configured with Ubuntu, so let's give it a try. Right away, you'll notice the custom icons actually show up. In Linux, if Wine isn't installed, you'll just get a, you know, a generic icon for each of these EXEs. Double-clicking on the Audacity installer loads Wine and runs the first time config, and it asks to install an additional component. After that's finished, the Audacity installer loads just fine. I installed Audacity with no issue and ran it. So this is pretty cool. But really, it's just Wine doing its thing. This isn't anything too new, but it works right out of the box, which is good. I'd say more should do this, but where would it end? Many, including myself, like a very bare Linux install. This lets people set it up to do you know what they want and configure it how they want. Uh, otherwise, you would have something like a RAM hog like Windows that requires gigabytes of RAM just to boot to the desktop. Now, I started off not wanting to like this. I don't like Windows 11, and it seems like they took all the worst parts of Windows and coupled it with Linux. However, after looking into it, I'm kind of torn. On one hand, they did a fantastic job building this. Well, building this theme for KDE. I mean, they really did. However, I think the issue I have is calling it its own distribution. Okay, so follow me here. Imagine if someone took Windows, changed the wallpaper and themed the start menu, and then sold you the ghost image of the drive and called it Bob's OS, or Windows. No, it's just Windows with your personal settings. Now, maybe if future versions included custom written control panels and something to make it a bit more than just a theme Kubuntu, well, I'd be all for it. 
I mean, look what they did with Mac OS. They took Next Step and turned it into Mac OS X. So the same is possible with Linux and Windows. It just needs to be a bit more than a theme. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. You tell me.